If I were to ask you, do you care about the environment, about sustainability, most of you would probably agree. However, if I did post the question, is artificial intelligence, AI, a force for good, many of you might not be so sure. While it's been a hype subject for some time, some aspects of it are quite controversial. Many people believe that humans would be uh, replaced by, by robots, that they would take over our jobs, make our life on this planet more difficult and reduce the chances for survival of mankind. So what is true? Let's find out. I invite you to join me on a journey to see the, the details underneath to go beyond some of the uh, mysteries and misconceptions and look at the data like we often do in data science. So let's take a start. When I was a young boy growing up in Munich, one thing that I was fascinated by was the TV series Knight Rider with the AI enabled car, Kit. Kit was able to reason, make his own decisions, and chase the bad guys, and eventually turbo boost out of any tricky situations that would arise. For me, it's always been a goal of mine to create solutions that help mankind make life easier, more sustainable. Little did I know that eventually I would realize my dream of building such solutions in my professional career that took me around the globe. Today, I'm a AI thought leader and director for AI and FinTech at PwC. And I have the pleasure of working on solutions like that with clients in Asia, US and Europe. And it's from that angle that I kind of brief AI on a daily basis. So it comes very natural to me. But I understand that I should define the term for the rest. Let's start with the artificial part. That one is quite easy to understand. The more tricky one is defining intelligence. Many have tried, and when we look up in Merriam-Webster, we can find five different definitions, including logical, mathematical, kinesthetic, linguistic, and so on. But let's start with the first one, the ability to learn or understand, or to deal with a new or trying situations, such as climate change and sustainability. So not many of you might agree that data is the new oil, but it can't be ignored that artificial intelligence will fundamentally change the way that the world does business. To quote my favorite author on the subject, Kai Fu Li, who said that PwC estimates AI deployment will add $15.7 billion to global GDP by 2030. Of course, you might not believe these big numbers, but you would still understand the scale of change that is about to happen here. And it's exactly those powerful tools and powerful methods that AI has that kind of fascinated me for a long time to kind of see how those could be used to speed up our work in sustainability and do something good for the planet. When it comes to the sustainable uh, development goals that many of you know, it's kind of um, been around for, for some time and it's for my time in a Silicon Valley company in 2014 where my extended team had the honor of um, contributing to the early drafts to them that I kind of started uh, being fascinated by the work of the UN in, in this. In addition, it was my parents who from an early age instilled 
um, the care for the environment, the recycling, the kind of awareness of what happens around us, something that I took with me on my journeys and my work around the globe on five different continents, that I would always look out for the environment, but also how people recycle locally and what they do to protect. When you look closely, you will find out that only three, namely 13 to 15 of those goals are related directly to the environment. So the climate action, the life underwater and the life on land. But when you take others into account, you realize that all of these goals are interlinked. In, for example, looking at uh, a person having enough clean water, enough uh, food on the table, enough um, job security, uh, enough income. Only that kind of person can really care and make enough effort to protect the environment. And in that way, we next look at what impact AI might have on those goals. So on the first instance, AI might have a detrimental effect to sustainability and to the carbon footprint. Um, when you think about some of the big data centers and also training AI models. When we look at this graph in particular, we see that um, taking uh, a flight from New York to San Francisco is only a small impact on the carbon footprint, but training a AI model would be 300 times as much. Now, for me, having trained many AI models with my team, this is really comparing apples and oranges. What you see in this kind of AI model is probably something that thousands of people worked on together in a corporate setup that is a one-off language model on, on a vast scale and that cannot be compared to a individual taking a flight. However, when we take this into account, we kind of have to recognize that the public out there still has a fear of AI, like we mentioned earlier, and that there are many misconceptions that we need to really fully understand and then debunk. And with that, we move on to more recent research. Earth.org and Spring and Nature mapped out the 17 sustainable development goals into three different categories in terms of the environment that we heard earlier, economy and society. What is quite telling here is that while AI might have a detrimental effect on some, the potential or the, the ability to enhance the chances of achieving those goals is, is much more powerful. So when you look at it, there's three to, two to three times um, the chance of having a positive effect with AI than there is to, to reduce or making these targets more, more difficult to achieve. And with that, let's look into some of the research that my colleagues in the International Network have done throughout the lockdown last year. When you look at sustainability graphs and climate change, you typically see a increasing curve, namely looking at the temperature going up by certain de degrees of Celsius and you look at modeling in terms of what that might mean and at which point it might be irreversible. Now, what we're seeing here in, in, in contrast is AI helping all of the regions around the globe to reduce their greenhouse gases in average by 4%, which is quite phenomenal. Some regions even going down to 6%. So we can say that there, there will be a tremendous impact that if my colleagues that modeled it are correct and they modeled it in quite a detailed manner. So let's look uh, in terms of what other impacts are there. One thing that we see, and I've been debating this over the last 10 years pretty much, is the impact of AI on jobs. So the debates are typically, will AI replace or create jobs? One thing that I realized by debating this all over the, the place is that it very much dependent on the industry, the, the sector and the country that a person is based in to see whether there would be an impact, a replacement. So while it is true that some 
uh, lower key jobs will be becoming obsolete. It's also true that other jobs will be created, uh, such as mine, in terms of being somebody who is explaining AI. But equally, other people would be maintaining and creating those models. And other people would benefit from the fact that certain industries are pushed by this. Now, to kind of close the data piece off, let's look into what are the four key industries that are benefiting from the use of AI. Starting with, with energy, we um, measured the, the impact here in terms of smart grids and controlling system to really, particularly for renewable energy, to predict usage patterns. Then also looking into transport where AI can help to enable supply chains as well as um, autonomous driving. And in fact, reducing some of the biggest uh, traffic um, um, jams around the world by controlling those systems. But then also to move on to agriculture, where with the help of smart sensors, alternative data, satellites and a AI system, we can predict weather patterns, we can look into reducing pesticides, we can look into reducing use of water, which brings us to the last point in terms of the water industry. Here, AI can help by um, spotting pollution early on, by um, predicting uh, rainfall, by kind of making sure that the, the, the water is used in the most efficient way. So overall, what we have here is a system where um, without the new insights that AI generates, it's very difficult to make those changes. Without it, in some ways, when we want to follow the sustainable development goals, we don't know which path to take. So we really need those insights to come full circle. We've seen some of these changes that are possible, also the details behind the use cases. But when we go back to Merriam-Webster, the second definition of intelligence is the ability to apply knowledge, the things that we just heard of and uh, kind of learned, to manipulate or to improve our environment, such as that we take on the things that we've just experienced and try to change for the better. And with that, we are thinking in terms of what can we do at the local level to uh, connect sustainability and AI. So whose responsibility is it really to connect those two forces? It is those people that build the models, like me and my team and many, many others, but also the people that are using the system in terms of flagging up inconsistencies, biases, restrictions, things that are restricting the use to a certain people group, to make sure that it's used in the right way. So firstly, when we call to action at the local level, it's for us to collaborate, to link academia, to link the corporates, the public, all together to create a better and holistic understanding how AI can really help sustainability. For me personally, um, having kind of led a lot of engagement in this and coming more from a technical or business side, one thing that really helped me to get a better understanding of the ethical and environmental um, effects that AI can have were some of my discussions over the last few years with the former Dean of London Business School, Sir Andrew Lickerman. It was his wisdom and experience from many, many decades, but also his works on AI and judgment that really opened my eyes to see where do we need to go with this. So kind of to share the ethical and uh, environmental concerns. And then finally, particularly in Germany, we have a long, long history of sustainability. When I think about the recycling that I talked to you about earlier from the 80s, but also in terms of research, and we are still a technical powerhouse. So one thing that shouldn't happen is that this is all theory and research and become a leading research nation. That is all great, but it's what really will make a difference if we build companies and products and we need to do some more of it. So to be really a leading voice in this, we need to sit at the table. We want to contribute. We want to go out there and have our voice heard. 
And with that, I leave you with a spark, the beautiful colors of sunrise at Turrimeta Beach by Tan Wills, a fellow globetrotter and photographer. It is for the beauty of this place and many others that we must remember that while the world is your oyster, it's up to you to find the pearls. Go forth and protect. Thank you.